Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment to Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, so it's multi-specialty, and the, my specialty is this, as you can tell, because I'm old. And the purpose of these shows is really not to talk about the law, though, elder law, but to talk about those people and programs that you ought to know about as a Hudson person if, like Frank and Mary, you want to live in your house until you die and be buried in the backyard and you don't want to leave Hudson, right? So um, we've had a variety of people and a variety of you know, issues that we've talked about here, but probably one of the biggest um, groups that you need to know about, we've talked about it somewhat in the past, is this group called Bay Path Elder Services, um, which is the, the, a regional organization whose point is to be helping you as a senior. Now, I know you find this is hard to believe, right? This, no, they're not trying to sell you anything. They're actually trying to use state and federal money that is available for seniors to help you. So, uh, I've got a wonderful person to talk about that, um, Mary Lou Sheehan, who has been, you've been at Bay Path now how long? 14 years. 14 years. Yes. And, and, and I know we want to talk a little bit about the programs and okay. about Bay Path. But then, first, I just want to, want to talk about you. So you're sure. you're you're not from Hudson. I'm not. You're from I'm a far away <laughs> place. You're from all the way down in Holliston. That's right, correct. Holliston, right? Where yes. you've been for like a long time. Yes, right? I've lived there for about 30 years. Yes, and you so. are, despite the fact that to my clients you all look like a kid. You 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 you're like you raised your kids there. I have. I have three sons that I've raised in Holliston. Yeah, and you have grandchildren. And I have six grandchildren. You have six now. grandchildren. Yes. Well, that's yes. really exciting. So. All under the age of four. But oh. Yeah. Oh, so, so you I'm look busy. amazingly stable for all, all of that. You manage <laughs> Not to always. keep your job also? That's great. Yeah. That's great. And now you've been working at Bay Path, and Holliston is one of the communities that's covered by Bay Path, right? Yes, that's correct. I think, yes. was there, there are how many communities, you know? There, Fourteen. Four, Fourteen communities yes. that Bay Path covers. Yeah. But their offices are very close by. They're right over here in, in, right, uh, in right Marlboro. Right in Marlboro, yeah. And, and just, you know, as a curiosity, about how many people work for Bay Path? About. Um, it's over a hundred. Uh, um, we have a lot of people that work off site. Who are working off site? So sure. we have because we do home delivered meals. So yeah. we have people off site. But um, what, one of the origins of, of the of the Bay Path is Meals uh, on Wheels. Yes, right? yes, like, and still very active. And it's like fifty years ago now. Yes, so like a long time. Yes, and long, it, it's long a growing time. program. But, um, so there's a lot, a lot of people. There right? are a lot of people, and over a hundred, and we have a, a lot of our staff are case managers, nurses. So yeah. they're out on the road, out in the community, visiting people. And as a matter of fact, you told me you even started as a case manager. I did, right? I did, and I covered Natick, Dover, and Sherborne. And, and how many years ago was that? Um, so that, 14 years ago, and I did yeah. that for a few years, and then I switched into becoming a supervisor. Yeah. Yep. And you progressed from that. And now you are? I'm Director of Clinical Operations. Director of Clinical Operations, so which I sounds work, like <laughs> a, a hospital. Is it no I know. So, so I know. What, well, not you, really. I mean, I think it, it covers a lot of programs. I work with um, closely with our nursing department. I'm, I'm a licensed social worker, yeah. um, but I work with a lot of our community programs as well. So, um, so it's pretty diverse. So that's yeah. So you're doing like a whole bunch of different things. Exactly, which is great. I, I work with a lot of great people. And because you've worked your way up, you've you've been in a lot of these slots. I have. I've worked right? in, with a lot of different programs, which is great because you learn a lot of different things, and a lot of the programs connect with each other. So just t t before we talk about the programs that exist now, just mm -hmm. tell t what is what does a caseworker do? Right. Okay. You have cases. Good right? question. So, yeah. So I know what do you, because what do you actually do exactly? a case manager. It's so funny a because case manager. Uh, yeah, yeah. in different venues, it can mean a lot of different things. But at Bay Path, um, you carry a caseload. Um, it depends. It can be up to about 100 people. And you're yeah. going out to their homes. You're assessing what sort of needs they have, coordinating services in the home. So it might be home-delivered meals. Um, it might be somebody coming in to do cleaning or personal care, I see. medical transportation. So you're trying to look at what are the most crucial needs that we can do to put in services to help out. I see. So, and, and, and this kind of relates to what you know, we were kind of talking about today. So if, if, I am a, if I'm a senior living in Hudson, mm -hmm. is there any reason why I shouldn't be calling you, right, to, just to talk to you about 
Uh, yeah, we can talk, absolutely. We can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. I mean, a, a good starting place for us is our information and referral department, mm -hmm. and they can you you can call them up, let them know about your situation, and they can really direct you to what programs might most work well for might, you. Might be helpful. And by the way, yeah. it, you know, as, as we talked about, we'll have a banner here right, right now mm -hmm. at the show, which will show the the, the call in the number. And also the email address okay. for people who might be trying to contact you, right? Mm -hmm. Because in, or or now could people actually literally just walk in? Does anyone ever just walk in? At, not at, not typically, just in, because we do yeah. have so many people, you know, out on visits. Sure. Um, but we usually do direct people to start with the information referral department, giving them a call. I understand. And then and so um, if I do that, if I call you today mm -hmm. and I've never called before. First of all, how old do I have to be before you're going to answer the phone? Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it it depends. I mean, yeah. we are called Bay Path Elder Services, yeah. but we also have programs for people who are carrying somebody younger with a disability. I see. Our personal care attendant program, adult foster care. So I would encourage if you're somebody that's caring for anybody, whatever age, and you just want to see if we can offer you some assistance, then you should give call. us a call. But then, if you yeah. but if I'm the senior myself and I'm not kind of caring for anybody, I'm just Frank and Mary, and we're living right. You're looking and, for services, yeah, and we just so, want to know what you do, right? So how, right. how old would I want to be before I'd, I'd want to be giving you a call? It would typically be your 60 years old, 60 year old for our home care yeah. program. Yeah. Um, but if you are, if somebody has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. we can um, help you out if you know if you're under 60. Even if I'm younger than 60. Yes. So yeah. so if either I have some memory issues or, mm -hmm. or, or the person that I'm with is the memory issues, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm 60 or over, then I probably want to give you a call. Mm -hmm. and, and if I call you, I'm going to go to information and and what are they going to what are they going to tell me? Are you going to answer the phone? No, no. no, no we have no. a we have a department um, that they cover and they they answer many questions, yeah. many general questions. Um, but they will they'll probably start by asking you some questions. So. Yeah. Your, your age, for example, what town you live in, and basically what type of information you're looking for. I see. Um, and then they'll go from there, and they, they will direct you to what program might be most appropriate. I see. And so can we kind of talk about some of those? So if I were calling sure. and, and, and I didn't, first of all, if I were just calling in general, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then talk about if I were calling because Either, either I, you know, I'm say I'm Frank and Mary, and either mm -hmm. I or Mary, uh, you know, have ha are having some issues, whether they're physical issues or whether they're cognitive issues. So first, kind of in general, if I'm just calling, saying, you know, I'm a senior and I'm, you know, probably retired now, and I'm trying to figure all this out, and mm -hmm. so, and somebody told me to call you. Right. right. Okay. Well, I mean, again, we would want to find out, um, you know, do you have physical needs, or does Frank yeah. and Mary? Um, are they having tr um, difficulty with personal care? Do you need someone in your home to help clean? Can you get out to do food shopping? Mm -hmm. um, are you able to get to your medical appointments? So just all those crucial things that yeah. keep people independent in their home. And so we I, want to find that out. I see. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do some of those things, mm -hmm. what can you do to, to help me? So then um, we can refer you to our home care department mm -hmm. and somebody would come out to your home and do a pretty thorough assess assessment of just um, really everything. They look yeah. at um, any medical diagnosis you might have, yeah. um, just what type of supports you do have. Do you have family or somebody assisting you currently? And um, they look at your home environment as well. So, um, so they'll re really try to do a pretty thorough assessment of, you know, what is needed, and and then they'll those people are trained in discussing not just home care issues but other things. Um, for example, if you're having trouble paying your bills, managing your money, we have a money management program, so they might oh. make a referral to that. Um, this is someone who might be able to come in and just put some order into an otherwise disordered. Exactly. System. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, so they really try to look at everything. Yeah. And, and, and would, what's would this needed. be the person who would also talk about Meals on Wheels? Yes, they would talk about Meals on Wheels, and yeah. they can um, set you up with a referral for that almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and then that would involve somebody from Meals on Wheels coming out to do more of a thorough nutritional assessment. 
I see. Yeah. I see. So, um, so, so they they really do look at kind of every facet. Yeah. So when yeah. that first person and that was that your old job? That was the caseworker job. Would you I, actually go to people's houses? I um I I did yes. Yeah. Um and I didn't necessarily do that initial assessment, but um I would go out into the home. It would be it would vary between two to four times a year, mm -hmm. and visit and just see how things were going. Any updates? Any changes? We also want to see if um, people have had frequent hospitalizations. Yeah. That's always a big concern. Um, and also falls. Falls are such a, a red flag where we're always concerned if people have frequent falls. So those are things that, that we want to look at. And, and so let's take that for an example. So suppose people have either you know, had some really frequent falls or are just really nervous about that. What, what could you do to, to to help folks, I mean, because a lot of folks would just say, "Well, you know, I'm just getting old, and uh, right. I just fall." So, right. would, can you really help with with that? Well, I mean, a lot of times it's um, we're not doing direct care on that, but yeah. we're uh, advising people to as simple as talk to your doctor about that, because sometimes it's related to a change in medication. You know, that people might not think of that. I see. Um, I see. So we try to to just talk it through, maybe see what the issues are. Is it something as simple as scatter rugs in the house, electrical cords, just the home environment? So we want to look at that. So we, um, and there's also evidence-based classes out there that sometimes are offered at Council on Aging or senior centers that, um, that have workshops on working with people who are fall risks. Which is real, that's really exciting. Yes. I, I know I remember talking to uh, well, uh, Christine Alessandro, who, who, who you know works with you, who's mm -hmm. talking about this matter, this matter of balance program. Yes, really designed to look at a whole set of issues around falling, mm -hmm. just in order to try to reduce the risk. Because as I so often, you know, so I talk to a lot of all my clients are seniors, and you'll tell them, say, you know, you can live. The I issue isn't how old you are. The issue is, are you healthy? You know, if and and you can do a lot of things, but mm -hmm. don't fall, because if you if you break something, that hip gets broken. Yes. It's I don't want to say it's a one way street from there, but it's not good. It's no, just not it good. It can be such a setback for somebody that's, you know, really been doing okay in their home. Right. So right. Um, so, so we want to try to avoid that at all costs. So you're you're evaluating all those issues at home. Yes. Yep. So so say that 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 I'm at home and I am tr having trouble. I, it's just having trouble getting out, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm having trouble getting to the store, right? Or just kind of cleaning up, you know? Once again, I like I love my home, but it's bigger than it used to be, mm -hmm. it seems, mm -hmm. right? right. And it, there's no kids around to help out, you know? So is there anything you can do for me there in, in, in order to help me not only stay at home, but keep my home clean and safe and all those things? Yes, we have, so we have homemaking services, mm -hmm. and um, so they'll come out to your home, and they can, you know, they do basic cleaning. They can also do food shopping mm -hmm. and prescription pickup. Oh. So, which is great, especially in the winter time for people. Sometimes right. uh, we'll have people say, well, I don't, you know, I don't need food shopping. I can get out and do that. But it can be a great thing in the winter time when the right. roads are icy, like yesterday and today. To have somebody go out and you know it maybe do a, a big order of, of food shopping for them yep. and get that taken care of. And so. and so it also just really reduces like your need to have the car. Like you know, right. I'm Frank and Mary. I want the car in the driveway because mm -hmm. it's always been in the driveway, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I would die if it weren't. Except I really don't want to drive, right? You know, unless it's a nice day and I really just. Right, feel like going out. So what yeah. does a senior have to do to, to, to have you help them with any of that? Or, and by the way, do you, do you actually hire the people that, that help them? So we don't have direct workers at our agency. Yeah. We contract with many agencies out in the community mm -hmm. and um, they all have to be vetted through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Mm -hmm. And then we have a contracts manager that goes out and does monitoring of all these agencies. So we work directly with them. They provide the workers. I see. I, I realize I should step back for a second. So we should talk for a few more minutes about Bay Path Elder Services. Mm -hmm. So what is that exactly? Is Bay Path like the government? Is it? 
So what, it's a private. It? It's a private nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. And it's uh, we work with um, federal and state funding, as as you said in the beginning. I see. So so, those so are money our is primary. Coming, I see. So the money is yes. coming in, and you're kind of. I want, to, I want to say like the eyes and ears, for want of a better term, of the folks that really want to be providing these services so that you're trying to figure out who needs them. Right, right. So right. you're kind of like really there. Yeah. So you're not charging, people aren't, you're not trying to sell people anything. You're no. Not a, you're not for a for-profit, you're not trying to do any of that. No, within, I mean, some of our programs are, are of no cost. Um, mm -hmm. For example, um, well, our, our home care program, if you're on Mass Health, mm -hmm. we don't charge anything. But um, on, from there, though, we do work on, um, we ask people what their income is, and then it's a sliding scale. So right. um, it depends on what your income is. Um, that's set by the state as far as what we charge. And, um, and it, it's pretty, as opposed to if you were trying to private pay for service, it's usually a better deal, and then you get a case manager on top of that to help you out. Right. So you, so you can expect to get a monthly bill if, um, you know, depending on what your income is. Yeah. But it's so, so, you, so you end up paying the, the entities that are, that are providing the services, and then you're the one who charges, for, charges the copay, and then they pay you. Exactly. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But it's all but sliding scale. It is. It's all sliding scale, and, 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 um, and I, and I would encourage people you know, not not to look at that first. Um, right. You know, we we try to work with people to get the services they need. Right. So and that's been my experience working with. I've been working for Baypath with Baypath for so many years. Right. Now, right. And the key to understand Baypath is to understand. You know, it's hard to believe. You know, but it's not a government bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> it's that they're actually just trying to help you out. Right. Yeah. They're trying to help you out. Right? Exactly. And you're going to be paying a copay mm -hmm. to do this. But you end up getting services that are just much more, much more reasonable. Right, priced. right. So, so, so now I, I've I'm dealt with those, you know, kind of very basic issues. I just don't want to get, you know, have to pick up my meds and do all of that jazz. Suppose I need more help than that, mm -hmm. right? Suppose I actually need help at home, kind of getting around, right? Right. What, 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 what at that point would you be talking to me about? So, um, you know, typically people will start off, well, depending on where they're at, um, on some basic services. And not to go back to money, but we are yeah. also working under a budget. Yeah. Um, so we just can't give everything. We, we really do have to look at what the crucial needs are. But we have many people who start out with us and then, you know, as they're aging in their home, they need more services. So we look at a couple of things. We do have some programs that you can move into. Um, one is called our ECOP, or Enhanced Community Options Program, mm -hmm. which it's a Medicare program, but it, it's just um, we would have a nurse go out and assess you. Yeah. And basically, you have um, your, your need level is higher, and you have clinical needs that require, you know, you might need help, assistance with your medication. Mm -hmm. or, um, or more hands-on assistance as far as bathing and things like that. So that, if you would qualify, then you would go into a higher program, a higher service program. I see. And then see. on top of that, we have other programs too. One is our Choices program, which is if you're on Mass Health. Mm -hmm. um, we have some very complex cases on that program, and those people have typically higher service plans. Sometimes people are in their homes every day. Um, even you mean the service people, the people who are exactly the, the workers, um, yeah. assisting people, even you know from transferring out of bed to toileting, um, to you know feeding, um, pretty much really everything. But I always tell people who are looking for those kinds of services. Now, once again, those, those for those services, you do need to be able to show. Uh, um, your, your, that you can qualify as an at in, in terms of your assets and things because those are mass health services. Exactly, right. You need the mass health for that. But yeah. the gatekeeper for that is you, mm -hmm. right? I yeah. mean, it is yeah. really Baypath that is deciding and telling mass health whether the, the person who is, who is looking for services um, um, actually needs that level of services. Or because otherwise they may need nursing home care, they might need to really change their environment. So it's right. so you're really the ones telling MassHealth if somebody really can with these extra services stay home, mm -hmm. which is a big deal, 
right? Which is why you have nurses as well as social workers. I, exactly, and yeah. And yeah. It, they have to be registered nurses. Yeah. And they establish that. Um, you know, it's it's all based on, you know, the, the clinical needs, and they do that evaluation. But, so. but then, then once you're once you're on Mass Health and on that program, they also go back and try to and and and, and work with you to figure out how many hours mm -hmm. you really need. Right, and they also reevaluate um, every well if their status changes, they'll go out. But for example, um, somebody that say has had a hip replacement, you know, we might go out and assess, and they have a really high level of need in their home. But a year later, they've improved they've greatly, improved. Right. which is wonderful. And then in that case, they may no longer qualify for that program. So we but, do see that that happen. Right. So when but we try the, to, from you know, the perspective, explain that's that. not so bad, right? But no. It means you can get around like the house. Yeah. That. That's means you a can good get around thing. the house again. It means you're more independent, right. and you know that we're there if something else comes up. Right. And, and and in many ways, I guess when when as I watch this play out, I mean, it, it's the goal really is to replicate for want of a better term, what things were like when we were kids. You know, mm -hmm. with, right? when we were younger, when there was a lot of family that did that, where you had, right. where you had, well, around here, big Catholic families, you know, when mm -hmm. you had, you know, brothers, bunch of sisters and brothers and, and nieces and nephews. And so if somebody was sick, there was all this, this personnel infrastructure mm -hmm. that could just kind of show up. You know? Right, right. And now, well, I mean, I, I think of us, you know, so, you know, we have three wonderful kids mm -hmm. growing up like you, but one's in D.C. and one's in mm -hmm. Austin, Texas, and one's in Colorado Springs. So if we need more assistance, they're not coming to help us with their groceries, you right. know, and they're not, they can't come, you know, home. they've got lives of their own, you know, and which happened, was true in the old days, except they lived down the street, so they could kind of yes. like juggle it, but now you can't, so this is really, I, I, I think, a great effort to help to replicate that right. so that people can stay home. Yeah, exactly. So that people stay home. Because sometimes for some people it doesn't take that much to keep them at home. It right. is really just the food shopping and the prescription pickup and you know it's and getting them to medical appointments. It's it's right. not a lot it's sometimes. Not a lot. And even if they are not well, pe people think, well, I'm not well, and, and therefore I need some assistance. But it isn't, when you think about it, I, 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 it's not like you need assistance all the time. I notice it from watching some of mm -hmm. your caseworkers analyzing the case, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you break it down into, that's right. why they call it the activities of daily living. What are these kinds of crucial things, right? Getting dressed, mm -hmm. you know, taking a shower, or taking a bath, you know, what, what are these crucial things for which if you try to do it by yourself, right, you could really be at risk. I mean, right. and I think, the, you know, obviously the most risky place in the house is in the bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. So they, when you're yes. walking into the bathroom, there's potential for all kinds of trouble, right? Just from slipping and, and you got right. hard surfaces, right? You know, and then, you know, obviously you need to be eating and stuff and you need food prep. But for a lot of hours, you don't absolutely have to have somebody who is around, right? right? Right. And so there may be some set of accommodations mm -hmm. that can kind of make it work, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, sometimes it, you know, people are fine pretty much most of the day on their own. Right. But at mealtime or things like that or showering, those are the times when they, they need that extra assistance. When they, when they need the extra assistance. Right. And a lot of times, too, I mean, there are some folks who are there and they're at home and they're just by themselves and that's the hardest thing to deal with. Right. But in many cases, there is the, the spouse is there, right? But just can't be doing everything, mm -hmm. right? Or you have what I always refer to as the, the, the designated daughter, and it's inevitably a daughter, right? <laughs> you know, there are a few sons, but not many, that, right? Oh, you're right. You've, you're, you're generalizing. Right, right. you've seen see, this. this is dangerous because I just have sons. So. Uh, well, <laughs> you I may have be lucky. But I daughter-in-laws, so. Oh, you have daughters. Well, maybe you, maybe, <laughs> you, got, maybe you recruited some good ones, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, but typically, the yeah. sons kind of bail. Just not, yeah. not, I mean, I was, just, I was just talking to somebody today at the Hudson Senior Center, this wonderful son who, you know, the parents have had problems and, and live around here, and he lives out in Central Mass. Okay. But he's, so he's been living with them during mm -hmm. the week for two years, and then commute, and then going back to Central Mass yeah. for, for, for his wife, you know, and the family. 
there are people who have really extended themselves, you know. Yeah, they're juggling a lot because a lot of times they have their own families, sometimes young families, and then they're caring for a parent. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're trying to so do it's... you're trying to do all of these things. Right. So so once again, going back, so if I'm mm -hmm. Frank and Mary, I should be I should be calling you. Mm -hmm. Now you've also you also before the show we were also talking about the website. Can you talk about that a right. little bit? Well, well, Bay Path. If so I'm Frank and Mary, or yeah. if I'm their kids, because if I'm Frank and Mary, one of my kids gave me a computer two years ago, and I tried figuring it out, and I couldn't do it, and I've given up. Right. Okay. But but a lot of times it's the kids. So t talk about this website. Okay. Well, um, well, there's the basic. Bay Path has its own website, but the yep. website that I was referring to before was caregivingmetrowest.org. That's wall one word. Caregivingmetrowest.org. And we're going to have a, bar a, a, a a little thing for that too. Okay, we'll have a great. banner so that you get to see this. So okay. People get to copy that down. Very good. Yeah. So, um, and if I click onto that, what do I find? So it's a great tool, and it um, it covers our local communities. So if you're looking specifically for resources in Hudson, you can click on Hudson, and it will have um, just a, a little bit of everything, um, whatever a caregiver might need maybe um, lists of social daycares, um, adult day healths, things like that. Um, so it's a whole variety it's, it's of things. It's just a little bit of everything. Yeah. And, you even have um, lawyers. Uh, uh, yes, have lawyers. Yeah, we have all, right. sorts, of, all right. sorts of resources yeah. on that. But um, it's, I, I would recommend you just getting on there and just navigating around it. There's um, our caregiver specialist does a wellness wall of just basically tips for caregiving. Um, a wellness care wall. That, that's what that, it's that's called. It's like a blog. Yeah. So she puts on different things, just um, different tips about taking care of yourself, getting a better night's sleep, just s simple things like that. But it really has just a, a variety of things. It's a great starting place if yeah. you are a caregiver. And it's for all ages. Um, I mean, we have a lot of younger caregivers out there too. Oh yeah. So um, a lot of those designated daughters. Right? Uh, yes, and designated sons. We and really designated should sons, say. And designated sons and designated yes. sons, and even occasionally the niece or nephew. Yes. Just yeah, the wonderful it can be, person. Right. Or sometimes it's even a neighbor. Yep. Somebody who's committed to somebody that, yep. that lives in their neighborhood. So it, it really, caregiver is a it's a very broad term. Yes. But yes. Um, but yes, I would highly recommend just getting on that and um, clicking you know clicking on your town and seeing what's available. And that's what's great about it. You update it regularly. Yep. And it's by town mm -hmm. because so often I think that's one of the one of the greatest challenges if you're a senior trying to navigate all of this is that the it's, it's all over the place. The right. services are all over the place. Some of the stuff overlaps mm -hmm. and, and you just don't know where to start, right? And so yeah. to some extent you can fall prey to, you know, the people really trying to sell you something that's nothing special. Definitely, right? yeah. Um, and I would suppose that would be the other or another advantage if I'm working with Bay Path, so I'm on, in your system, mm -hmm. And there's a person who is, e even if I'm not getting any particular services, so there's a care manager who every once in a while is checking in, but there's also, that means, somebody I can call, mm -hmm. right? If, if I think if there's trouble, if I think there's trouble, mm -hmm. right? There's somebody I can call and kind of run it by them. Yeah, Say, yeah. what do you think of this? Yeah, there's, there's um, you know, we don't, we can't necessarily recommend sometimes like an agency right. or, so it basically is for, for resources and information. Um, but we always recommend, you know, say if you're looking for a private pay agency for homemaking or something, yeah. calling a few different agencies, getting prices, um, finding out a little bit more about them. Right. So, um, right. But, but that's where the website is, that's where the website is handy too, because you've got these lists of things and you can kind of like, Right. You can check around. Right, you can exactly. Check around. Yep, yep. Well, Everything is right there, which is good. Which is so I can't thank you enough for doing oh, this. Oh sure. It's just it's great to get just I'm happy to do it. As I said when we were talking before the show, I said the goal of this show is so that people can kind of connect a face with a program or right mm -hmm. and and see that this is and, and Bay Path is this really special organization because it's not Absolutely. government. It's not I hate to credit. It's not the Registry of Motor Vehicles, <laughs> but on the other side, they're not trying to hustle you. You know, they're not trying to sell you something. It's right. really designed to be the program where that seniors can go and trust it, right? Mm -hmm. If they want to be like Frank and Mary and they want to stay home, definitely. So, yeah. thank you very, very much for uh, stopping by. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you haven't connected with Bay Path Elder Services yet, you should. There's no cost to calling. Don't wait until there's an emergency. You should know about them. You should have an established relationship with a caseworker there so that if there ever is problems later on or are problems later on, you can call them right away. Um, thank you very much, Mary Lou. Thank you, Mary Beth, I did it wrong. No, Mary, Mary Lou, never, you're correct. This is my age showing. <laughs> and thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you.